So I just got back from the AI4 convention in Las Vegas, where I met up with Dylan for the first time, and it was quite fun. It was quite a collision, if you will. But I'm finally back and just kind of catching up on news, seeing what happened in the world of AI while I was away, and it's kind of a lot. So let's uh, catch up really fast, and we'll start diving deeper into every one of these things in the next few days. Let's get started. First and foremost, we have Elon Musk and Sam Altman, unfortunately, kind of going back and forth, taking shots at each other about some of the stuff that's been going on about OpenAI being on the top of the Apple charts. While according to Elon Musk, XAI and Grok, they don't quite get the same treatment. Now he is promising that we'll see Grok 4.0 hopefully this month, and that he's hoping that it's going to reach number one. Certainly, I think a lot of people are going to be paying attention to how Apple ranks their different apps. You know, the suggestion here is the insinuation is that maybe Apple is giving preferential treatment to OpenAI versus Grok since they seem to be having or trying to have some sort of a partnership potentially, potentially integrating it, who knows? But we're probably gonna see a little bit more of what that looks like once Grok 4.2420 gets released later this month. One of the sort of the founding members, the original researchers at the company, Igor Babushkin, he left XAI. It seems that everything is very peaceful. There's a lot of respect there. He will be pursuing AI safety research and making sure that we're able to create AI in a safe way. So we'll dive into his post in just a second. There have been some rumors about a potential Gemini 3.0 release right now. There's no substance to it. This chart is likely not real. It looks like they have GPT-5 with the XAI logo. They're not listing Grok 4, which had a 44% on this humanity's last exam benchmark. But Google have been hinting at potentially releasing something new very soon. And that might have been Imagine 4, the fast model, so developers can quickly generate images only two cents per image. And also the updated Imagen 4 and Imagen 4 Ultra to support 2K images. So Google AI has been shipping tons of different stuff, including the new Gemma 3 270 million parameter model. But so far, as far as I can tell, no reference to Gemini 3.0 anywhere on the horizon. So it's likely that, that those were just rumors. So we should not expect it anytime soon. I'm sure it'll come out eventually, but nothing on the horizon so far. Let me know if you've heard anything contrary to that, but definitely that's something I think a lot of people are looking forward to, right? What's Google's answer to GPT-5? GPT-5, by the way, just finished Pokemon Red. Massive reduction in the number of steps compared to O3. And it's gonna be taking on Pokemon Crystal next. So very, very exciting. Here's kind of the chart showing how much more efficient, how much better it was versus the O3 model. So much faster, very, very rapid progression. And uh, I'm just happy that they're using Pokemon Red as a benchmark. That's a, a very interesting way of uh, sort of testing how smart the models are. You can check out the live stream on Twitch TV, right? So now we have Claude that played Pokemon Red. We have Gemini that played Pokemon Red. And now, you know, previously we had O3 and now GPT-5. So quite a collection of different AI models playing Pokemon Red, which is just phenomenal. In other news, Leopold Aschenbrenner is back on the scene. He appeared in the Wall Street Journal talking about the AI fund, which he is currently running. This is the article, Billions Flow to New Hedge Funds Focused on AI-Related Bets. Now, Leopold is a 20-year-old former OpenAI researcher. He's behind the situational awareness. There's a few blog posts that he made. There's a few podcasts that he's been on that kind of really showcased potentially where AI is going. He was talking specifically about the idea of recursive self-improvement with AI the point at which AI will get better than humans at doing AI research of improving itself, so to speak, which might cause a intelligence explosion where kind of the AI abilities kind of go a vertical, a very rapid progress forward, which of course is a very, you know, exciting, but also kind of a, a scary time since we're delegating the research on this very important technology to this, you know, artificial intelligence itself. It's a weird thing to think about. 
since his blog post released, we've seen tons more papers being published showing that, yes, we are beginning to potentially approach that. There's more and more examples of AI doing AI research. We're seeing some papers showing where it's doing machine learning research and seeing some success with it. We're still not at the point where we no longer need AI researchers, as, of course, Meta proves by giving out $100 million sign-on bonuses, billions of dollars for acquiring companies. But it does seem like we're maybe getting closer to that mythical, theoretical intelligence explosion. Again, it's just a theory, but it's something that I think a lot of people are paying attention to, either with concern or excitement, but I think something that's kind of on everybody's minds. So I did not know this, but actually it sounds like he named his fund Situational Awareness, and it's managing now over $1.5 billion. It looks like the fund did 47% in the first half of the year, outperforming the S&P 500 and tech hedge funds. Yeah, I would say so. If you're wondering what he's betting on, his strategy involves betting on global stocks that stand to benefit from the development of AI technology, such as the semiconductor infrastructure and power companies, along with investments in a few startups, including Anthropic. He told investors he plans to offset those with smaller short bets on industries that could get left behind. So sounds like he's off to a good start. I mean, gaining 47% after fees in the first half of the year. That seems huge, right? So that's after he takes his fees out, and that's only in the first half of the year, right? So that's half a year's of performance. 47% is quite good. Obviously, we have to see how sustainable that is. Nobody is able to maintain that, you know, for a long time. I mean, for reference, the greatest investors, the legendary investors, if you look at their entire life of investing, the legendary ones are like 20% maybe 30%, some of the higher ones. That's like the best legends alive. So we'll see how sustainable that is, but he's definitely off to a good start. Looks like he recruited Carl Schulman, another AI intellectual who used to work at Peter Thiel's macro hedge fund as the director of research. Some of the backers are the founders of Stripe, as well as Daniel Gross and Nat Friedman. So obviously there's a lot of insiders, people that know more than AI, than sort of like the people that are on the outside, maybe investors, as he's saying, they're gonna have a lot more situational awareness than any of the people who manage money in New York. So I'm curious what everybody thinks. Let me know, do you think this is gonna be just an excellent fund? Everything that he's saying is correct? Or do you think he's just a great marketer? The blog post situational awareness was just a marketing strategy to get everybody in, right? The idea of the explosion, the intelligence explosion, just a way to get everybody very, very excited and wanting to throw as much money at him as possible. Let me know what you think. 10 years from now, is his fund on top or kind of like reverting back to mean and just not really doing too well? Let me know what you think. In other news, Igor Babushkin left XAI. He's saying today was my last day at XAI, the company that he helped start with Elon Musk in 2023. He left the Russian Federation after the collapse of the USSR. Him and his family were immigrants to the States. This stands out to me. He's saying that in early 2023, he became convinced that we were getting close to a recipe for superintelligence. He says, I saw the writing on the wall. Very soon, AI could reason beyond the level of humans. How could we ensure that this technology is used for good? We're not going to read all of it, but for those that are interested how XAI does what XAI does, there's some really interesting nuggets of wisdom in there. Elon Musk and XAI caught up fast, right? So they came from behind, right? They, they did not have a large language model when others already had ones up and running with users, etc. They created one, they managed to get massive amounts of compute. And this details, for example, how when something wasn't going right, they flew out to the data center and worked late into the night. And Elon was right there with them until they finally managed to get the thing working. And when the training run finally worked, Elon posted our triumph at 4.20 a.m., causing us to laugh out loud. Certainly, that's a very Elon time if you've ever had to stay up late into the night troubleshooting something that's kind of a, a hairy problem, you know that feeling of cracking it eventually. You feel exhausted. You feel completely wiped out, tired, but at the same time, just really happy that you were able to fix it. It's a hard feeling to describe, but having 
been in those types of situations, I know why Igor is looking back at it now, kind of reminiscing about those times, because usually that is exactly what goes into creating big companies or any movement, anything big, usually requires those crazy late nights. As he's driving away today from XAI, this is his last day, he's saying he's driving away like a proud parent, driving away after sending their kid away to college. He recently met with Max Tiegmark, founder of the Future of Life Institute, and Max asked, how can we build AI safety to ensure that our children can flourish? So he showed the photos of his young sons, and Igor was deeply moved by the question. If you have kids or are thinking about kids, it is an important question to ask. For us and most of our ancestors, you know, we all faced certain threats and risks in life. But with this emerging technology, the fear is that the risk profile, if you will, is completely different. And that's why it's incredibly important that we get it right. And I'm always very impressed with people like Igor and Ilya Sutskover and many, many others that seem to be not money motivated, at least in terms of like their own personal wealth. Their goal isn't to just acquire, you know, as much money as possible, but they seem to be interested in the mission of creating super intelligence that benefits the world. That's my take. Maybe it's a little bit naive, but that's what it certainly seems like. There are good researchers out there doing good work and trying to the best of their ability to create something that is powerful and safe and will be a net positive for the world. So with that, he's announcing the launch of Babushkin Ventures. Terrific name. Fun to say, just flows off the tongue. Perfect. So it seems like he's leaving on good terms. Elon Musk is thanking him for all his work, saying we wouldn't be here without you. But it does seem interesting that a lot of the people, the researchers that helped launch these kind of frontier AI models, a lot of them are kind of pivoting, I guess, into AI safety. Because you got to imagine that they are signing bonuses at these various tech firms would be just astronomical. If the goal was to maximize their personal wealth, uh, you know, going with something like Meta, going to work for one of these big companies, or going the capital raising, you know, hook up with some big investment firms, try to build something like that, that would be the way to go. A lot of these people don't seem to be doing that. They're doing private investing, but they're not marketing their product, or they're focusing more exclusively on AI safety, maybe without even having like a product side to the company. But also notice that, you know, the people that were there kind of at the very beginning, they're not saying, oh, yeah, you know, we've hit a wall. It's fine. You know, LMs, they got this far. They're not going to go any further. In fact, here he's saying that he used to be a technical lead for DeepMind's Alpha Star StarCraft agent. He's talking about how powerful reinforcement learning is when scaled up. This is what we've been talking about quite a bit. So kind of the next big wave is potentially the scaling up of reinforcement learning. So we're kind of combining, you know, AlphaGo, AlphaStar, all of those, like the techniques and all the stuff that we learned there, the, the reinforcement learning, self-play, et cetera. We're combining it with large language models and the kind of general intelligence that they possess. So as he says here, the singularity is near, but humanity's future is bright. So I'm very happy that he's working on AI safety. And in general, I'm just happy that a lot of very smart, very dedicated, very good people are working on AI and making sure that it's safe. One thing that also kind of blew my mind in the last week or so was the fact that OpenAI's model got the gold medal on this year's IOI, International Olympiad on Informatics. Now that is huge, but here's the thing. It's almost kind of like old news because of all the other things that we've seen, these models winning various gold medals at other math competitions. It just kind of overshadows this a little bit. It's not as exciting, but this is big. We're seeing massive, massive improvements in the AI's ability to reason, to solve complicated math problems. OpenAI's model was the number one relative to AI. So out of all the AI models that competed in this competition, OpenAI came away number one. And compared to humans and everything else, it was number six. So it was number six relative to human performance. So that's it for me today. So I'm just kind of getting back into the groove and trying to catch up to everything that's been happening. I met a few of you at the AI4 conference. Thank you so much for coming up and saying hi. It was incredible. We'll talk about that in a different video. We're going to be having a few really interesting interviews. We had some AI 
insiders that chose to talk to us and we were able to get a few very interesting interviews hopefully being posted soon but with that said thank you so much for watching this and i will see you in the next one